Hey guys, welcome back to Personality Podcast where we get personal and spill the tea. I have Crystal back on. You guys loved her in the first episode, so she's <laughs> back on like literally. Really? Like, yeah. Oh, like really. a month later. It's been four weeks since we started, which seems like Crazy. it has not been four weeks. I don't know, right? It like it's has gone by so fast. Yeah. But. Um but if you're not on the tubes, the YouTubes, I guess we have something to talk about. So I decided with the podcast that I'm going to do every other week. I used to vlog, like I have been vlogging for a long ass time, never consistently. Like I used to do it when Brian was a little baby in my private videos. They're so damn cute. Um, maybe I'll put some of them public so that you guys can see because they're so cute. Uh, but then I like would always stop. I would never, ever stay consistent with vlogging, but people would always love them. So then when I started the podcast, I took all my videos down and people like were kind of pissed about it. They were like, what the hell? Like, you're not going to vlog anymore. Um, and then when I started doing the podcast, I was like, OK, this is a lot to do every fucking week. So what I decided we're going to do is podcast one week vlog the next podcast one week vlog just like rotated on and I talked about that in my last vlog because I did it last week I posted a vlog and you guys seemed very excited about that so as of right now that's my plan um and if something changes and it changes or if I want to flip it and do two podcasts straight in a row you know like we're just gonna go with the flow here like nothing too serious you know nothing too deep just just taking it casual day by day but yeah if you're interested the last vlog was mother's day weekend i was switching up my house and shit um you can go see that <laughs> i know it looks so different yeah already. it looks so different in here that's why we have this stool if you're watching the video of this because i'm not willing to fuck up my new table the last one i kind of just like yeah put the microphones on there but not this one um something else i got a freaking kitty Oh, yeah. Yes. I got a kitten Look. yesterday. Funniest story ever. I was at Ikea getting more stuff for our house. Nice. She's like, what the heck are you doing? Yeah. Um, and this lady messaged me. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this lady messaged me saying that she had her and she needed to get rid of her like ASAP. So I was like, OK, like I'm literally on my way. I didn't tell Parker. I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> Um, up until like five minutes of getting her, I called Crystal and I was like, I'm on my way to get a cat. And she was like, what the hell you're doing? What? And I was like, I'm getting a freaking cat right now. Um, and I got her, we named her Gemma. She's an orange tabby. We think we don't know for sure, but she's eight weeks old and she's literally the sassiest, cutest <laughs> freaking cat ever. Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't like a huge surprise to Parker because I had been telling him like, I want a cat. I want mm -hmm. a cat. I want a cat. I've been telling him for a few months. So he just was like, I hate this, but she's so fucking cute. I know. <laughs> I want one now. I never really was a cat person or really even a pet person. But just lately, I just feel like cats are my vibe. Yeah. I'm not a pet person at all. Okay. So with Blue, when we got Blue, I was having major baby fever like major but I knew I didn't want a baby so I was like okay either we get a dog or we have a baby because I knew Parker would be like get a dog instantly he was like get a dog we got blue like that week like we put the deposit down on him and I love blue like don't get me wrong he's actually like a really good dog um but he's a dog I don't know I'm just <laughs> like not an well, animal and he's person a pretty hyper dog yeah so. he's hype and he just is so needy for attention and I don't like attention like I very much so am like a cat where like mm -hmm. I want you to love me from a distance like I just don't touch or me just be around mm -hmm. just like be around me but like don't give me like a whole bunch of attention mm -hmm. that's basically what I thrive mm -hmm. off of so I was like I've been so pulled to get a cat because I was like I feel like they're more my vibe mm -hmm. like the dog is not like again I love him we're not getting rid of him like he's part of our family but we can add in a cat so that's what we did. We add a little Gemma girl, and she's freaking hilarious. I might get her a friend. Yeah, you should. You should get a kitten so they, they can I play know. together. <sighs> I'll think about it. <laughs> we'll see. Because I live in an apartment. She has a home. So, so who cares? She's a cat. It's not a dog. Like, they're so mm -hmm. different. I don't know. I can, bar I can barely live with Etienne. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Period. 
Um, <laughs> um, anyways, so I was talking to somebody. I was like, what, like, what's like an interesting topic that I could talk on the podcast? And they had suggested that we talk about how we grew up Mormon, I guess mm. you can say. Um, so when our mom met our dad, she was pregnant with me. So again, if you're new here, I'm adopted by him, but he's my dad. But while he's in my life, my whole life. And he was on his mission <laughs> in Buffalo, New York, and he met our mom. His mission, like... If you if you don't know what Mormons go on missions, those like those people that knock on your door, you're know, usually like a Jehovah on bikes. Witness kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So he ended up doing that to our mom, and he took her ass back to Utah. He left a Mormon virgin, and he came back with a crazy Latina with three daughters, and then they got pregnant with Crystal. But, um. So yeah, he was Mormon, Mor <laughs> Mormon, mm -hmm. and his whole family was Mormon, and we kind of just like stuck to it, I guess, because mom like took us. To Utah which is kind of fucking funny um and you get baptized when you're eight it's eight right um I think if you were born into the church yeah I think it's like seven no, or eight no I don't like think you have to be born into the church no you can get baptized at any point but like yeah if yeah, you're yeah. Born I mean into like the church. when you turn eight like mm -hmm. if you're in the church already I think it is yeah yeah so and you don't really have a fucking choice like they kind they kind of mm -hmm. just like force yeah, you they to don't do ask. it um now that we're adults, we know it's a fucking cult and like our family isn't in it anyway. Well, you know what they say if you don't get baptized, right? Dad told me that if you don't get baptized, like you go to hell and you won't see your family yeah. in the afterlife or that whatever That church it is. is so fucking crazy. Like my brain has like this trauma response of like making me forget things. But every once in a while, like when I talk about things with you guys, I'll like remember freaky ass shit. Like... I remember when I went into Young Women's, they would take me us to the temple and they would baptize us for like people that were like dead or whatever, basically. Mm -hmm. And it was so fucking oh culty. Yes. I saw some girl. Are you getting that from that girl that talked about it on TikTok? And no, I know Thothi was telling me that some girl on TikTok is like yeah. sharing her story, mm -hmm. um, which like that's what like made my memory come up. Because again, like my brain definitely hides like traumatic experiences from me. Um, but I remember it was, like, so fucking creepy. They literally give you a list of, like, people's names. I don't know, like, I don't know who these people are. Like, why they're even wanting to decide that they want to get baptized after they're dead. Like, no, they I don't, don't decide. I mean, I know, but, like, are there family members? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know where the fuck that list even comes from. It's so crazy. Like, the rules to get into temples are crazy as mm -hmm. fuck. Like... The way that you have no say is crazy as fuck. It's just all really scary, like, when you think about it. Yeah. It's just, um, <clears throat> everything's just, you just really don't have a say in your yeah. life. I remember feeling, like, so uncomfortable because, for the most part, Mormons, I feel like a lot of them are white. Like, yeah, obviously. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and they didn't accept black people until the 70s. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I know. It's freaking crazy. It wasn't crazy. even that long and ago. And even then, like, they low-key still make them feel uncomfortable. Like, I For always sure. felt so uncomfortable, like, especially living in Utah or even when we went to church in Texas, like, bring, like being a brown girl, like, in <laughs> a cult. I was, like, all white people with, like, blonde hair and blue eyes. It was just so freaking weird for me i remember always feeling uncomfortable mm -hmm. like even if i had the nicest clothes and nicest shoes i still felt like i did not belong there or they would like basically like try and force us to like go up and like speak in front of all these people it's just know, so your weird yes yeah, your testimony yeah. like oh my god it's so weird every time we're like i mean i don't do this crystal you definitely do this what? when we're with dad you like want to sing some of the songs and dad's like no oh, yeah. no no stop I mean, now I don't do that anymore because it may, I mean, not so much him, but there was another family member that like got uncomfortable. Um, it's just, it's a lot more traumatizing for yeah. our dad than it is for us because we grew up Mormon and then it kind of stopped when we got to like, for me at least, I was like 12 when I stopped. Yeah. Really, like really once really our remember parents got divorced, my mom basically didn't give a shit anymore. And like, was like, I mean, she, I went with, um, you know, who and mom for mm -hmm. like, 
Yeah, until it was, I like, I mean, 12. I think that's very much so, like, fake it till you make it, but... Oh, yeah. for sure. No, but you still go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I was saying, like, our dad, he was born into it. That was, yeah. like, his life. And when you're born into that and, like, ra- you go yeah. on a whole freaking mission. And their parents. Their parents yeah. and their parents. Like, when he started to actually do his research and, like, all this stuff, he, like, literally, like, had a mental breakdown. Yeah. He was, like, I think, like, 35. Yeah, it's crazy. The like, church. the first time he ever, like, drank, he was so much older. Like, the first time he ever, like, did anything, basically. I know. Isn't that insane? It's, like, such a different experience he's, from us. He's a whole new person, but in a really good way. Yeah. Yes. Like, can you imagine if dad yeah, was still Mormon? Yes, we would Mormon? not have... I don't even think I would have a relationship with him. I don't even remember dad as a Mormon. I do a little bit. You do? Yeah, he's always been a really good person, but... Um, I think he would want to be a good church member or whatever. So he would probably, and that church is, you know, I may get some people disagreeing, but, um, they, you know, they kind of tell you like you're, I mean, all religions, they're like, my church is the right Mm -hmm. church and blah, blah, blah. So they kind of talk shit on the people that are maybe like Catholic, Baptist, whatever. I don't know. So I wonder if he would have been like disappointed in us or yeah. something like that because if that was the I mean, case I feel I like if have. our parents were still Mormon though we probably would be different don't you think I don't know just because I don't know I really don't know I think our generation like is a lot different so than ours think, yeah I think it is too like even some of the Mormon I know if you're like a mom or even if you're on TikTok a lot you've probably fell on to Mormon mom talk for a minute and it's like that group of moms one of them followed me I think she unfollowed me because I probably did say something fucked up about Mormons um which like I have nothing against you being part of whatever religion you want to be as long as you're not yeah Yeah. as long as you're not like really like an asshole about it pushing it in people's Mm -hmm. face like I don't give a shit what you believe in or what you do um like but we were we were once mormon and yeah, so we i can think tell our story yeah, like we're allowed to talk about mm-hmm. it we're not just like bashing on shit that seems fucking weird even though it is mm-hmm. fucking weird um and some people some mormons will have a completely different experience yeah but what yeah that's exactly what i'm saying like those yeah. girls on tiktok that are mormon like it's so shocking to me every time i see them because they're like in bras on tiktok they're shaking their asses on tiktok and then they'll have TikToks where it's still like, um, like they'll they'll drink soda as if it's alcohol. Like, oh, I'm addicted to like soda. Like, it's so weird. Yes, they're, I don't know, it's so weird. But they're like proud that they're Mormon. They tell everybody like, yeah, we're Mormon. We're a part of the Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints Church. But then like the way that they dress, which I I love that they're like doing what they want to do. I love that they're wearing two pieces because like to me when we were Mormon that was like so bad like you're gonna wear a two-piece bathing suit actually this tiktok that i've been wanting you to like make a tiktok to the sound so one of the church leader or i don't know some (sighs) dad told me his name um i think he was leading like general conference Mm -hmm. or something like that Um, those were dude general conference okay if you're that was another one i know like if you're like part of another religion like tell us if people do this like they would sit down and like watch what do they call him a prophet? Well, it was, no. No. It, I don't even know. I, don't, I, I think it was a... You just said it. it was, I just said church leader. I think it was... That's, just, I think that's literally what it is. Like, the big guy. Yeah, in the church. There's a few of them. And they would have general conference once a year. I think it was once you a year. You sit there for hours. Yeah, and, and it's watch recorded. these old, saggy-ass men. And this, listen to like, what talk one of about them the weirdest shit. said. Let's see. Okay. So this is... <laughs> One of, I don't know his fucking name. I wish I knew his name. Br- Anyways, was it Brigham in Brigham Young or some shit like no. that? No, Th- he's dead. I know he's dead. Oh, yeah. I think I'm pretty. Is sure this somebody that like is active? No, this right now. was someone who was talking at General Conference. Yes, okay, active. Um, and this is something he said at General Conference, and a bunch of girls are making TikToks to it, and I, which I think is awesome. Mm-hmm. They're like taking the power back. So, anyways, I'll just play it. And young. Please understand that if you dress immodestly, you are magnifying this problem by becoming pornography. Porn- porn- pornography. If you dress immodestly, <laughs> you do- And it's a bunch of girls. Yeah, just, you should you know, say that to me. Yeah, you should. 
Yeah, they're fucking cuckoo, bro. Let's just take a moment to diagnose what he just said. Or to dissect, not diagnose. If you... You know why he's saying that because girls are starting to wake up more. Like I said, those girls on TikTok, those mom, those Mormon girls. It's just all about control. They're all wearing those sports bras. They're all, and there's nothing fucking wrong with that. Like who cares? Okay. He said, if you dress in modesty, you become pornography. So, and this, (laughs) it's funny because what she's wearing, she's wearing athletic wear. Yeah. Like to that video. And that's consistent deemed unacceptable athletic wear like Mm -hmm. maybe some biker shorts and like she was wearing like a I think like maybe like a little bit of a cropped um yeah that's what I'm saying like when I was younger I used to be like we would have to put like shirts underneath our yeah they they still do they wear you wear like a dress that covers Mm -hmm. that's like below your knees and then you can't wear like spaghetti straps or anything too revealing like it's just crazy because in my head, you wear you wear whatever the fuck makes you yeah. feel good and confident. Now, but I remember thinking as a kid, like, yeah, oh, well, you're bad. Or even the soda, mm-hmm. like, when we were with mom, I was like, oh, drinking soda is so normal. But when we would go to like grandma's house, I would feel so ashamed if I wanted a soda. Yeah. Like, no, it was either water or milk. Like that is what you're drinking, water or milk, which is milk. So, milk, yeah. You say milk, milk, milk. It's milk, milk. M- That's M E L K. Water or milk. 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 Period. Milk. Milk. It's literally the same shit. No, it's not. <laughs> Anyways. Um, the worst part about growing up as a Mormon was when people that you went to school with would find out. They'd be like, do you have... Oh, facts, Yeah, bro. do you Especially have three moms? Club. Or like, do you have... Da, da, da. Like, like, they thought their religion was so much better. It's yeah. funny. That's and <laughs> like, I well, I used to defend it because they would be like, well, Mormons have multiple wives. And like, the kind of Mormon that we were, I guess, didn't. And so they would like put that in our head. Like, Mormons do not have more... But Mormons do have multiple wives. Like, there are Mormons that have multiple mm-hmm. wives. That's polygamy, yeah. Yeah, but they're Mormon. Yeah, no, like... There's religions with, like, subtypes yeah. inside of that religion. So you can be m- Mormon and then be, but like, I a polygamist Mormon. I used to get so Mormon. offended. Like, Mormons don't fucking do that. Like, we're, we're basically Christians. Like, I would try and defend it so hard. You know what Dad told me, too, and a lot of people don't realize, or I didn't realize, Christian is not a religion. It's a, like, a type. There's, so Catholic, you're still a Christian. Um, I believe Baptist, Mormons are Christians as well. If you believe in Christ, you're a Christian. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a subtype. So when people say Christianity or you're Christian or whatever, it's not like, oh, you go to a fellowship church or whatever. It's like a, it's a whole broad whatever. Yeah. Like a whole bunch of religions or whatever churches fall underneath Christianity. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought Mormonism was separate from Christianity, but it's not. And no, it I've always sense. heard that it was like part of like. Yeah, it's under. Yeah. They all fall within Christianity. Um, That definitely like fucked me up when it comes to religion. Like, I just think all religion is just like. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to offend gonna anybody. You get a lot of people. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I just like, again, I like respect everybody's beliefs and I would sure. never like push my beliefs For on sure. anybody and. If one of my closest friends wanted me to go with them for whatever, I would, I'm willing. If Parker wanted to start something, if my sons, if my sons decide that they want to be in religious or go to some type of church, like I'm always going to support them. But for myself, like I do not believe in God. Like I do believe that there was a human Mm -hmm. that. No, there was. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like it doesn't mean it's a like a magical being like yeah, everyone yeah, that's makes what I'm saying. it out like, to be I 100% believe that there was like a human that was doing really good and he did amazing things mm-hmm. and maybe he was a con artist and he had people thinking that he was doing magic and then he died and that's it and I think that people fall on to religion as literally their last hope yeah. for a lot of things Um, And I have, like, I said it in, like, my podcast with Aaron, like, why are my reasons for that? And I understand that, like, it's life. Like, people are going to have miscarriages. People are going to die. Babies are going to get sick. But it's, like, even, like, Mormons, they always have these huge-ass houses and all these cars. And it's, like, you guys are literally such a small population of this world. Like, you guys are praying to this God. I don't know. It's just so weird to me to see, like, all these sick homeless people. Well, so, like, the first thing... 
I'll tell someone if they're even willing, which is funny because I feel like a lot of people are not really open and willing, like willing to um, even have a conversation about religion or not about religion, but being agnostic or atheist Mm -hmm. or anything like that. They kind of just immediately it just goes one in one ear and yeah. out the other. Whereas now for me, like I'll listen to anybody, whatever, any, whatever makes sense to me or makes sense to them. And I'll, I'll at least listen, like give mm-hmm. them the respect of at least just listening to what they have to say um, without trying to convince them that, you know. Oh, yeah. I've wrong. never, ever, ever, ever tried to convince anybody that they're wrong yeah. with their religion. I just feel like that's so wrong. Like, yeah, I would feel so uncomfortable. But I'm just saying like when I have had those conversations, mm-hmm. like usually what I would say is like, imagine our planet gets wiped out and I don't know, there's like 10, a hundred humans left and none of them know about religion. Yeah. So how are you going to find about, out about religion? Like I really genuinely want to know, like if there's no book, there's, you know, we all evidence is gone or whatever you know, where's the proof of religion? That's where we were at one point. Yeah. Like there were humans who didn't know what it was and a civilization developed, religion became, you know, prominent. And um, I don't even know if I want to share, like, obviously this is just a lot of science-based evidence, but, um, in theory, I guess, but a lot of religion is there um to control people um, that's what i'm that's what i was gonna say when i was like all these women have these big houses yeah. and shit what happens yeah what like, happens when population yeah. your population gets too big so you need control you need to control mm-hmm. people so what do you do you come up with these rules and you say okay if you kill people how do we scare them also how do we scare them to control them okay if you kill someone you're going to hell if you okay what else don't we want them to do um we don't want them to we're going to tell them like, if they have sex before marriage or whatever, they're going to hell. Um, it's also, like, huh, that sex part is just so fucking crazy to me how taboo it is. Like, yeah. um, I don't know if you guys have watched um, Rent and Link, but they started a, like, another channel. And they were talking about, like, their how they were growing up in, like, purity culture. Something like that. Religion or something. And their wives came on it's like a really good episode their wives came on and started talking about how no one told them anything about sex like they literally had no no idea up until like the day of their wedding they got a book they got a book that showed what a penis looked like and like like what's gonna happen like a penis is going to enter inside of you they had no idea which is like fucking wild crazy Mm -hmm. to me and then like these people get married at 18 and 17 just so that they can fuck that's why they're getting married well and a shitload of pressure (laughs) yeah yeah because people know that's one of the people know they're gonna fuck though like Mm -hmm. so their family's like you need to get married because you you know in some religions as well like you're not really allowed to have sex unless you're trying to have a baby you can't have sex for your own pleasure. You can only have sex when you're trying for a baby. And you can only do missionary. The fuck? Like, we are such sexual beings. Mm-hmm. Like, to our core, we are. And it just, it's really sad that, you know, we have, you know, so many beliefs that uh, women, like, why is it so okay for like to talk about men masturbating or whatever but when it comes to women like it's like we're like put put down i know i watched a netflix documentary about this it's called ugh, i can't even remember i definitely you guys should watch you it. you know why that is it's because of men, men obviously ma- <laughs> men made it that way yes and i love that like the times are changing mm-hmm. and like women are not shit, keeping their yeah, mouths they're shut not anymore. keeping their mouth shut like we're speaking of about what we need or want and if you're not going to do it then fucking bye. leave bye like that's just what it is mm-hmm. i know yeah Trust. it's called like something about pleasure or whatever but it talks about it has like four episodes three or four episodes and it's mind-blowing to me mm-hmm. like it 
taught me so much that I already did like I already you know feel like I know so much more than like the average girl yeah. about their body and how normal it is like certain things are normal whatever but that documentary was insane to me like it taught me so much more about just being a girl and what's okay and what's normal and what's not like yeah it's crazy I used to feel like so I don't know yeah ashamed? I definitely no not shamed I definitely just felt like it was more important if the guy got off oh for sure um <laughs> and once I stopped doing that like stop thinking like that it came to the point where like like I'll just be 100% real like my sex life went sex life went down so much because I was like I'm not going to only have sex to please you and it's not because he didn't care it's just like that's kind of the presence that I put out there like I don't need to be taken care of I guess or I'm not going to relax enough to like let myself get there you both need the same thing yeah like, yeah yeah if and i'm not gonna talking about off, just you know, with parker like i'm talking about like general. since i've been like sexually right. active it's always been like i need to take care of the man like i'm the woman like i need to make him feel good and bitch once my mind switched up on that i was like no i'm not going to have sex unless i'm in the mood you get me in the Facts. mood like i know i'm going to also enjoy this mm-hmm. like this is fucking stupid like there's two of us and i feel like a lot of girls are still like kind of getting on that train um i was talking to one of my friends like i actually got her like her first vibrator <laughs> or actually like i helped you get your first vibrator you helped me you did? I told you yes remember you and etienne went to the store after i said no, you need to okay. go get a fucking i toy. mean yeah that oh my god i would not recommend that it was trash but not that i don't like sex toys or anything like that the just vibrator place, was trash yeah the vibrator and the sex store like okay, our well, experience was awful <laughs> yeah maybe you guys need to try again but i was talking to her about vibrators and she was like i could never do that like with my man like he would feel so shamed and i was like he probably has a little dick. yeah well mm-hmm. he probably has a little dick then that's why because like like or they feel like they can't do as good of a job as mm-hmm. a vibrator so they're like and it's like that is your fucking teammate that, you that's dumb ass. that I is know. literally your fucking teammate make it work together like what the hell do you mean like i know you'll have your guys girl are like, like yeah guys are like you don't need that and i'm like yes the fuck i do yes the fuck i do like i don't okay why maybe not? i don't but i want it like why it, not yeah exactly like what the this is wrong our fucking using, what the fuck is wrong with men using have a this thing where what? it's like if you're not blah, blah, and I'm like if there's if there are like sex toys for men that we can bring like fucking bring them in like I let's, say that too let's all fucking do time. it like I Facts. have no like but yes too, I like, want to please my man I want to be the one to make my man feel good but if there are things that we can bring in to make you feel even better um we're gonna fucking bring it in and it should be the other way around mm-hmm. too I've never like I've never had like the person I'm with feel insecure about toys like that, but I've had People. somebody Same. be mm-hmm. insecure Same. about toys like that. And it's so different. It's mm-hmm. so different. Like it you makes just push everything. Yourself down. S- no, you're immediately limiting yeah. your sex life mm-hmm. and you're making your, you're like shutting your partner down and to what's going to make them s- feel good. I know. And like, how all, can you do that? It's like, already such an intimate, like vulnerable yeah. thing that like, If you turn someone, like, let's say, like, I said to my partner or whatever, like, for the first time, like, hey, like, I'm interested in getting a sex toy. And they were like, no, like, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to feel comfortable bringing anything up again. Mm -hmm. Like, it's going to be the same fucking boring ass sex life. You don't need that. Like, I do a good job. Like, Mm -hmm. like, even if you do do a good job, which, trust me, you're not doing as good of a good job (laughs) as as you you think compared to a vibrator. Like, you can be literally the champion of eating the punani like trust me but you're not going to be a vibrator like you y'all together elite Mm -hmm. like but you're just not going to beat it so if you can give your girl or your man even if there are like toys like that you can bring in like that like a cock ring or whatever i was gonna say a ring there's like then fucking do it, you dumb ass. Like, stop. And if your men are literally making you feel insecure because you want to bring in something like that, find a, like new, that, man. Find a, find new, a man. new man. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's so... I feel like that's almost being very b- verbally abusive. Yeah. That's, like... It's, like, hindering in, you so hard. That's a red flag. Yes. Absolutely. absolutely. 
like okay i understand like if you're bringing like a huge like shiny pink dildo out that's like <laughs> this big <laughs> sure like i understand that how like, that's gonna be intimidating yeah. for me yeah. shit but there a are little some, ass vibrator like, yeah or even like a, one of those wand like anything like literally anything like get the fuck over it get the fuck over it yeah they're Ugh. just that's like so frustrating anyways what i was saying is like my, my friend was like no like he doesn't want to do that like he gets so intimidated by it he says i don't need it and i'm like you know what you need to literally that she, he's, he's in the telling shower her she yeah. doesn't need it you need to literally when he's in the shower lay your ass on that bed and use your fucking bri- vibrator get yourself off so he can see how fast you get yourself off and he can come out that fucking bathroom you're already done before he gets out the fucking shower i would Im- dude i would do some crazy ass shit if a man like told me like no you're not gonna bring that into our bedroom oh you're gonna wake up and have dildos around your fucking head <laughs> like i'm sorry like you're not going to hinder my like yeah you know yeah i i agree that's some of the stuff that they talk about in that documentary I'm talking about. I'm going to find it. What is it called? I'm going to find it. Yeah. I'm definitely pro sex toy. We have like a whole little cute little box. One time I told my story about my sex toy um, being found by my housekeeper. The Principles of Pleasure. Watch it. Yeah. We'll go watch that tonight. Yes. Um, I guess I'll say it on here. So one time Parker and I like left our sex toy box underneath the bed. It's under the fucking bed for a reason, right? Like that's where people put their boxes. Sex, yeah. Like we, we put it with a, we put it like underneath the box. What the fuck am I saying? We'd put it underneath the bed <laughs> or we would put it in Parker's like top drawer. Our housekeeper one time came over and she took it from out of underneath the fucking bed and laid it on our bed. She tied the bow because there's a bow in the box. She tied the bow and put it on the bed after she made the bed. I came home. She was still downstairs, like finishing. I went upstairs to work a little bit, and my all my sex toys were on the bed. And I just Bro. was like, "What the actual fuck is going on?" Oh my god. She's like this little religious ass Mexican lady, and I was so that's embarrassed. Actually, really inappropriate. Yes, that's what I thought too. I was like, "Why the fuck?" It's clearly underneath the bed. Like, she had to open the box because she Should tied the Should they touch them? I don't know. I don't fucking... I mean, my shit's clean. I, know, I don't know. I don't want someone to touch it. I know. Like stuff. They were on top of the bed. I took Sparker. I was like, I'm so fucking embarrassed. She won't even look at him in the eyes. I think she <laughs> thinks that he's probably, like, the devil or something for having those sex toys. <laughs> or you guys are, like, Fifty Shades of Grey shit. Yeah, we have all that shit in there. Bruh. <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> The amount of, that's what I'm saying. Like the amount of sex toys that we have are, is like a little OD every time. Okay. If you're too nervous to go into a sex shop, go to Target. They have the best fucking vibrators. We have every single one that Target sells. I swear to you. Every time we go, if we about the ones with like the rainbow print. Yeah. We have all of those and they work so fucking good. They're rechargeable. You don't need to put batteries in that shit. Just go to Target and get it. You don't need an ID. You just go to self-checkout and purchase it. Text. You don't have to go into sex toy or sex Amazon. Store. Yeah, but some people, a lot of people share their Amazon account with family members. Don't use Prime. I check you can out still as a see guest. your orders. Like Jeremy, like my sister and her husband are on my Amazon account. And sometimes I want to order stuff like that because I've seen stuff. But then I'm like, mm, I don't know if I really want them seen. I guess. The stuffs that yeah. I'm ordering. No, I understand. Like if it was if you, sharing. I really wouldn't give a fuck you know yeah but then i think like jeremy lets his brothers use it too so i'm like uh i'm open but like i don't want you to know exactly what's going on my coochie you know what i mean facts <laughs> but yeah if your man's holding you back let that man go facts or watch that fucking documentary with him and if his mind don't change after that i don't even know what to say because it literally is that good it's so good i feel like it's 2022 i couldn't even imagine a fucking guy like being that insecure like sex toys are everywhere i have had so many sex toy companies reach out to me um and i've kind of been on the fence about like wanting to work with them because i do want to make it i want to normalize it more but then i also um like i'm trying to be particular with what i put on my social medias because my kids are getting older you know what i'm like brian's friends are 
starting to get on social media and I don't really want them to get on my stuff and see me talking about a sex toy, but I also want it to be normalized. Right. So it's like so conflicting for me, like what yeah. I want to do. And I know that there are like appropriate ways to like, I mean, then I would talk about it more on things like this because I probably won't yeah. fucking sit through an hour long podcast. Yeah. And get to the part where I just wish about more freaking parents like monitored what their kids were watching. Like oh, obviously sure. my TikTok is not appropriate for nine year olds right. to be watching. Um, and like, I do that, like I do that with my kids, but I wish other parents would monitor their kids on social media more like freely Thanks. giving your kids phones is fucking berserk to me. I know it's I've insane. Gone, I don't even want to say that. Um, I've seen like a few kids, so do I know, like their TikToks and Dude, I'm yes. telling or you, even like, like, I remember being on like Omegle or whatever oh, yes like seeing men's Facts. dicks popping up yes. on my computer like they're masturbating Social media is and me and my friends cool. would just laugh like that was years ago Facts. imagine now like social Facts. media now like brian gets so pissed at me because i won't let him have tiktok and like i won't let him have all this other shit and i'm like i don't give a fuck mm -hmm. like you can be upset at me like you are eight years old like the fact that your classmates have all of this stuff is so insane to me yeah. like it's so crazy to me what the hell are what the hell are y'all doing on tiktok no facts because i know that they're eventually gonna mm -hmm. find out you know one thing leads yeah, to I another know i can't like another. hide my kid from yeah, things but you it, he's just still so young right. i feel like you're controlling what you can yeah i feel like these parents are just starting a little too young like once he's on there he's on there like yeah. he's gonna he's gonna see what he's gonna see what do you think is like the appropriate age for your kid, because obviously it's different. I think with our everyone. generation, I think it's going to be like, like, I feel like 12 is still young, but with our generation, I think it's going to be like 12 because I don't want him to be like so sheltered where like he's going to be sneaky and like right. want to go behind my back and like get TikTok while he's at his dad's because his dad doesn't give a shit. He'll let him download whatever. Um, So I still... I agree. Like I think 10 to 12. Yeah, 10 to 12. Like, Something I do like that. think that that's still young. Like, I would prefer it to be 13. Yeah. But they're going to do but it if 13, you don't. it's ridiculous. Like, mm -hmm. I see our nieces and nephews, and I'm like, you're a fucking grown woman. Like, you're a grown man at 13, 14. So, I know I can't wait that long, uh, even though I want to. Um, he's about to be nine in, like, four weeks. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, Sheesh. You're still so, so fast, young, though. but... Like, the way that kids are now, it's like, I can't shield you because I don't want you to be sneaky behind my back. And they need to, you know, like it's life. Is They're going to barely just fucking ask me if the tooth fairy's fake <sighs> two days ago. And I'm like, I love that. Like, I love that you're about to be nine mm -hmm. and you're still like, he still believes in Santa Claus, like all of that shit. And so, like, I know some, I see nine year olds on TikTok that are like shaking their ass in crop tops. And I'm like you're not about to be my daughter-in-law i'm sorry like <laughs> it's not happening i don't know i'm so conflicted about that like as my kids get older like i'm excited for them to be teenagers but i'm also like fucking terrified Nervous, because yeah. like i'm fucking woke okay like i i'm a woke ass mom like i know what's going on in social media like i know these trends like i know what's happening and it's well that's fucking the wild. thing that like it's kind of like a um, like a pro that comes with being yeah. like a younger mom is, you know, you're young with them and you get to see what the fuck's going on rather yeah. than let's say like you're like a like a 35, 40, 30, 35, 40 year old mom. Mm -hmm. You're not really going to know what the fuck your kid's doing. You yeah, think like you our might sister know. doesn't get on TikTok. She has teenagers yeah. that are obsessed with TikTok and she does not get on TikTok. And so we're kind of her eyes on TikTok. Because <laughs> I'm like... Every time there's a new app, I somewhat want to get, like, on it and just be woke. Yeah. Like, I want to know what's going on. Like, I don't want to. Well, it's hard not to. I, when yeah, you're I don't want to be, too. like, these kids. Like, what are y'all on mm -hmm. now? TikTok? No, bitch, I'm on there. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm on there trending. <laughs> okay? Like, you're not, you're not about to do the sneaky shit behind me. Like, if you're going to do some fucked up shit or, like, you're curious, like, I want you to talk to me about That's it. That's another one that I want to talk about because we sound like we're like bashing on maybe a little bit on kids like in their curiosity. 
it's no no really, no it's so normal to be yeah, curious it's so that's what normal. i'm saying i can't stop it like yeah. i can't stop it well not and i don't stop want it. to stop like you, it exactly you don't want to stop mm-hmm. it you want them to be curious it's life yeah you need to learn about it at some point or another and i so. feel like our generation like for me i when i was like 12 i was hardcore like on my space and transition to Facebook. Like I do you remember Viva, Viva? Yeah. I've OVO? Al- OVO. Yeah, OVO. Yeah. I've always been on social media. Like I was one of the first generations, I think. Cause I was I've even talked to Parker about it about it. And like at twelve and thirteen, he wasn't on the computer like I was. Like I was on the house computer. Yeah. That like sat in the corner. Like mm-hmm. as soon as I got home from school, I was sitting on there until That's I had to go to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like when laptops started to become like more affordable for everybody, I I had a laptop in my room. Yeah. Yeah, I was always on social media and I still am to this day. Like that was like my generation for sure was like the peak of social media. Um, and so like, I know how it goes. And you're 96 baby. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 98 baby. Mm Mm-hmm. I've never like not had social media. I've, I've had MySpace then I had Facebook, then I had Instagram and now I have TikTok. So I've been on all of them. And I think that's just like, I think that's like such a pro for me. But also, I don't know. Like there just wasn't shit on the internet like there is now though too. Yeah. Like I could worse. see shit. I could see shit, but you know what like else is now. crazy to me? That you can just fucking type in porn and porn videos yeah. come up. Why isn't that monitored? It used to be like on the TV, like after your family was sleeping, you had to go on like oh a my secret God. channel. I remember that too. Mm-hmm. No, but why? Why is the internet bro like, i mean everything why you can is there no anything. laws that at least like have to at least type in i was born in fucking this year yes i'm 18 or whatever you it's go to a porn site it says me and my teen stepdaughter fucking okay that's another thing i want to talk about why what is up with the fucking porn names it's like all like stepdaughter stepsister yes like, it's so weird it's so weird especially like the big i think the biggest porn sites i think well obviously is Pornhub, mm-hmm. and then there's like a few other ones i don't really know the fuck yeah, i don't watch porn like that's it just kind of grosses me out like honestly i mean it's because porn culture yeah. is like that i'm telling mm-hmm. you it's because they say shit like that who the fuck wants to like because women are really visual mm-hmm. so and like kind of s- storytellers wh- whatever we get like turned on by things like that and when I read a fucking title that says like steps, steps, something about a stepsister or stepdad or whatever, it's disgusting. It just makes me feel like gross Ew. for watching that. Yeah. Why would I want to take part in something that says that? Every time that I have watched porn, like when I used to watch it more, you just feel disgusting after. No facts. Like disgusting. Yeah. You don't feel I, like that when you read porn. So, but you I've feel, talked about that with Etan before, and he said that it's kind of the same with men. Yeah. I've you talked, feel nasty yeah, I've talked to Parker about it too. Like you just feel disgusting for watching that. And like, like I've said, like on my other TikTok with Aaron, not TikTok on my other podcast with Aaron, like when you read it, it's just so much more like romantic realistic too. Yeah. It's realistic. Your imagination is there because you're not seeing two strangers do it. You're kind of like imagining yourself like in that case. Um, and, like, after you read it, you're just turned on. You're not like, ew, I feel gross for reading that. Like, Yeah. Ah. And another thing I was going to say is, like, okay, so in porn, like, all they show, like, it's, okay, let's talk about unrealistic expectations mm-hmm. in porn. Why the fuck does every vagina look the same? Yep. Why the fuck is every asshole bleached? Mm-hmm. Why are all the titties, like, he, like, You'll see some people who look more natural, I guess, but for the most part, it's fake boobs, a fucking clipped vagina. If you don't yeah. know what that is, like, it's a surgery where, like, they cut your um, labia, labia and t- <laughs> for it's whatever gone. fucking it's reason. It's like a little fucking baby vagina, mm-hmm. which is so weird to and me. It, oh, yeah. And they're all shaved, yeah. like, perfectly waxed or shaved or whatever. Why? Why the fuck Society. is that normal? Like I just don't get it. Like that's not normal. It's not mm-hmm. what we look like. Mm-hmm. Why do you want the, the person expectation is different for men when they start having sex with women and then women feel insecure well, because their bodies don't ex- look like there that. There is there is a little bit for men too. Like it's not realistic for every dick to be fucking eight inches long. Yeah. Um. I mean that's mainly the only one I can think of. Or I guess to have a six pack or whatever the fuck. Or go for like an hour and a half. <laughs> yes. Or to go yeah. for an hour and a half. Even fucking like an hour, forty five minutes, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Like No, I I 
I am it's full on that issue. watching porn is toxic, but like, well, certain sites, cause there yeah. is some sites out there that people have dedicated, um, to making it more realistic and it's more, it's I think more every, like just like everything else, I think in life, it's toxic if you make it toxic because yeah. again, there are realistic like porn sites They're mm-hmm. like, I guess like only fans now is more like I've never been on there, but I know like normal normal people looking people are doing yeah. OnlyFans now um that aren't like professional like porn stars or like you know mhm but yeah that's definitely like I just I can't watch it anymore I don't know it just doesn't it just doesn't do it for me I know it's just crazy to me like that that's what like you want as that's what you want as yeah. a man is you want well not only that like the, a lot of the women on there, Tits, you want someone to yeah. kind of look like a... You know like how many a, times I go back and forth from wanting a boob job? It's mainly because I see, like, the perky... Yeah. I don't really want no, big it's boobs. because I just that's want, what's, like, like, deemed as, like, yeah. good-looking. Mm-hmm. But then, like, Parker would be like, bro, your boobs, like, your boobs look good. Yeah. Like, they're natural Like, they boobs. match you. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm like... They're like, yeah, you. they do, you know, like they do. But then again, I'll put on a dress and I'm like, uh, I don't feel like very yeah. like womanly. In and then this after having a baby too, my like boobs aren't like boobs. to my fucking, like my boobs, yeah. I guess they look perked up now because it's sports bra, but you know what I mean? Like sometimes it's I'll put on like, like certain dress. dresses I know what you're or like, yeah. or certain shirts that like go down. I'm like, ugh, I don't feel like womanly in this. Yeah. I don't know. And it's all because of social media. Yeah. But it's like, I think that no, like, it's not just social media because even before social media like Marilyn Monroe and no have you seen her body I actually was reading up on something like that yes she, had, so she was like, only a like 100 no she, no. Had, no she had like a belly no like, girl she was 120 pounds they made her seem like she was fat she was no, 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 no I'm not saying she was fat I'm saying that she had like a normal like she was body thickums. okay yeah. and to them that probably wasn't like yeah you know, That's, but okay, she, yeah. and what I'm saying is she just had a normal woman body. Like she wasn't like, like yeah. starving herself. They considered like her a like plus that. size model. Yeah. 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 Isn't that crazy? But what I'm saying is she just like was normal. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I go back. Sorry if you can hear that. Who's That's that? my child. It's um, Brian on the game. Yeah. Like I was watching on, again, with Netflix, um, there's a Netflix documentary that dropped about Marilyn Monroe mm-hmm. and they were talking about how she was plus sized, but she was like five, one, five, two, something like that. Somewhere in that range, 120 pounds. I weigh like a few pounds less than that. Like yeah. what the fuck? Like am I plus size? Like, no. You're not. And even then, what's wrong with that? Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah, just, okay, I saw this crazy. TikTok of this girl. She was like, I'm usually a size small in dresses, and I had to buy this size medium dress in Zara, and I'm so offended. And I went to the comments, and this one girl was like, why are you offended by that? Like, we need to stop looking at the tags of yes. our clothes. And it's so fucking true. Like, she was so oppressed mm-hmm. about having to buy a medium when she's typically a small and I was like you look so fucking good like why are you so upset right now over the tag tag on your dress yeah she was like I have to order up like I have to size up she was like so upset and I was like you you still look good like what is the tag like maybe it just runs smaller even if it didn't like why does that matter you know it's because people you know they want to they feel some (laughs) sort They feel proud of if you fit into a small, like, oh, I'm part of, like, yeah. the elite, whatever. But I whatever. felt like we were trying to, like, not trying, like, we were getting past that. I mean, we are, but, you know, there's there's gonna, still going to be some stragglers. Yeah. So. Some stragglers. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. It's going to take, like, a few more generations before we make, like, some huge progress. We We've made a lot of progress with our generation. Yeah. But, like our parents' generation mm-hmm. and still like yeah, I can't see generation. fucking like, anybody breeds. without them talking about my body. Like, oh, do you eat? You're so skinny. Like, I mean, like in mom's generation and stuff. Like, they yeah. think it's like, like just because I'm not fat. Do like, you I'm gonna fucking that in say your this. Comments? Mm, no. That's and good. if I do, I like really just delete them. Like, I think I probably have like very, very little. But what I was gonna say is, is like because I'm skinny they think it's not like offensive because I'm not fat because if you were to go up to like a plus five plus size person and be like wow you're so fucking fat you need to stop eating it'd be the end of the fucking world 
But you can go up to a skinny person and be like, wow, you're so skinny. Like, you need to eat more and it'd be okay. I don't fucking think so. Yeah. Like, I started being a bitch back. I was like, it doesn't make me feel good when you come up to me but and can touch I tell you my waist. And you're like, oh, my yeah. God, you're so skinny. Like, or you're you're so cold because you have no, no, no fat on yeah. you. And it's like, that is fucking offensive. Yeah. No, it's not okay at all to tell especially you or anyone else you like you're too skinny it's or like whatever. anything about their natural with my now i'm extremely confident with my body yeah. because but like growing i've up, literally yeah. pushed two fucking humans out of my body and i look like this like not to sound super cocky but i know i look good like i'm proud of my body um but even if, if i didn't have kids by now i think i would still probably feel insecure about my body because I do get a lot of people that comment on how skinny I am, but I'm yeah. like, yeah, and I push two kids out. Like, this is just how my yeah. body is. Like, I'm proud of how my body is. And but even people, if I was, yeah. like, People thicker, just say that because a lot of, like, skinnier women are praised and a lot of bigger women have received the hate for generations. Yeah. I so did make a video why. on TikTok where I was, like, complaining that, like, smalls aren't actually smalls because sometimes they aren't. Like... It's it's fucking hard to shop sometimes when you're Hella. really petite Hella. and people We're get short. offended by that. And they're like, oh, imagine how it is for plus size. And I'm like, I'm sure it's fucking hard. I'm mm -hmm. not saying it's not hard. Like, I know it's hard for you, but that doesn't mean that yeah. it's not hard for like it's not it's one thing hard being for small, but too. it's it's one another thing being petite. Like I am petite. Like I am. 95 pounds and I'm five feet tall I've never weighed more than that even in my pregnancies so it's like it's actually really like you didn't weigh more than 95 in your pregnancy I got like to 98 with Oliver oh shit um yeah I don't gain weight during That's my pregnancies weird. and it's like really like emotionally draining too when people are like just shop in the kids section it's like I'm a fucking woman yeah. like I don't want to shop in the kids section like just like you want there to be bigger clothing for plus size i want there to be smaller there just clothing needs to be for a petite. wider range just like yeah. foundation how we want more yeah, ranges yeah. but and shades. if i say that like if a white person were say like a really 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 pale white person said i want a lighter shade a darker person would be like you don't need that like there's yes. so many for you okay, yeah. so bigger plus like medium larges they're like you don't need that like you're the beauty standard and i'm like can you shut the fuck up like obviously that's not like i'm not degrading like i'm not bringing y'all down because i'm saying that i can never find mm -hmm. things that fit me like i'm just saying that it's hard to find things you're as telling your side of the story yes. and you're allowed to but because it's a beauty standard i'm not allowed to without people being like oh you yeah. you have no idea what it's like and i'm like literally no and they don't know what it's like to be you either you don't know yeah. what it's like to be them and they don't know what it's like you know, to be you. like i get so much shit for that every time i do haul videos i just delete the comments like i'm such a big comment deleter so i'm like you're not going to fucking do you filter me. comments too mm -hmm. i yeah, filter I certain too. words like i filter like cuss words or like just mean things like ho like the word hoe like <laughs> no one that is being nice to me is gonna call me a hoe you know like i'm i'm filtering that I love word you, bitch. yeah I but love like no like bitch i don't filter bitch because some b people are like bitch you know yeah. so like i don't filter that but like there are like stupid like i filter the word stupid because no one's saying stupid in a nice way you know? Yeah. So I filter like certain words like that. Cause I'm just like, you're not about to fucking come on my page and be a bitch to me or like bully me. Cause honestly I have no self-control. I'm going to fucking fight back with you. Like I'm going to bully <laughs> you back. Like you hurt my feelings. I'm going to hurt your feelings back. Like I don't care. So I'd rather just not see it. Yeah. Ugh, I could go on about this fucking social media shit. I don't know how we started off with like being Mormon and then we ended up talking about sex and then like, and then standard. we got our way to the like, body standard i know shame, body shaming whatever. i know and we're ready at an hour let's read a story that somebody okay. sent to me Damn, we're i hour. know yes oh, it goes by flies. so fast it flies mm, okay i don't know if you guys can see Gemma, but she's, she's been so fucking, fucking cute if you follow me on social media you've seen her a lot like i cannot <laughs> not post her like she's so fucking cute i know people are about to get sick of her let's talk let's talk about it for one second okay so what the why do people hate cat so much like oh, yeah. i guess we used to i mean but, i like, used to too like i can't yeah, even lie just it. because they have like a bad rep i don't know people are like Ew, they're like stinky she's just not stink no, at all bro. it's not stinky they think that they're mean i mean some cats are fucking mean but though. some some dogs are too and some hamsters are some yeah. whatever you could go on and on True. and on so that's my thing is like i'll admit it i used she's to like say that about cats freaking too. kitty and she's i so guess sweet. also because more people have 
allergies to cats like i'm allergic to her like i definitely am i've been having like some reaction but i'm willing to go get my shot every six months to like have her here like they're i don't know i don't know why cats get such bad reps it's it's just that people just associate like cats maybe because dogs are like man's best friend or whatever so it's because cats are more like independent Mm -hmm. and they're like some of them can be sassy i love that like that's what i love about cats is like they're independent like they'll like love you when they want it you know like Mm -hmm. dogs are just all up in your fucking face how could you fucking like say like you hate her come on i know like someone being like it's so weird how like cats are usually always free too and dogs are like so fucking expensive like there are expensive cats don't get me wrong like there are like i've been doing my research there (laughs) are pricey ass cats but for the most part people are giving away cats for free i know well duh we have oh my god we have so many fucking animals like in shelters dogs and too though but we still paid so much for blue i like, know we paid so no but i'm saying like us. there's so many people who go like to a breeder yeah. and i understand like you want to go to a breeder because you want to know like their parents and like their history and if they're sick or whatever mm-hmm. but there is testing you can get done like yeah. this cat like we went to a breeder for blue because of the shedding because he's a large ass dog like can you imagine having Wait, like what do you mean the shedding he doesn't shed what does it have to do with the breeder because I wanted a dog that didn't shed. Like, you can't really go to a shelter and get a golden doodle like blue. Oh, that okay. costs thousands of dollars. Oh, gotcha. Um, I just couldn't have, like, a large-ass animal in here shedding. Like, I would die. Like, it's different with her because she's so tiny, I think. That's why my allergies are, like, ma- manageable right now. Like, my throat's a little itchy and, like, my face is a little itchy at times. But I can go wash my hands or, like, hop yeah. in the shower and I'm okay. Like, last night I was fine. But, like, if I had a large-ass dog all over my house like a husky shedding everywhere, German shepherd shedding, I would die. Like, I literally <laughs> couldn't do that. Um, but yeah, let's read this story. Okay. Let's stop giving cats bad reps. Facts. Give them a shot. Give them a chance. Yeah. Okay. So she said, hey, this is my story. I really need advice, and I've never told anybody the full truth except for right now, so this is really scary for me. Basically, I'm 18. Ugh, girl. It's always the young ones. Have you noticed? It's so sad. I know. Okay. Well, my advice is already about to be leave him. Whoa, whoa, wait. She said, wait, read it again? Okay. She said she needs advice. She's never told anybody anything about this. And she said, basically, I'm 18. I already know it's about to be about a boy. Oh, okay. She said, basically, I'm 18 and my boyfriend is 25. And we've been together for three years, which is kind of weird since he's a lot older than me. Yeah, you were 15. 18 18 years ago i mean (laughs) she's 18 three years ago she was 15 yes and he was 22 Mm. which is kind of weird since he's a lot older than me the thing is he lied to me about his real name and age until i turned 18 for obvious reasons and now that we've been together for so long it's basically impossible for me to leave no it's not he's a predator yeah he he lied to you he He probably groomed you. you No, he is 100% a predator. He lied to you about his age. If you... And he knew you were underage. In my opinion, if you date anyone who's still going through puberty, you're a predator. It is never impossible for you to leave somebody either. Oh my God, I cannot believe he lied about his age when you were 15. Do you not agree with that? Like if, if a kid is... Not a kid. If someone is still going through puberty and another person is not and you're with them, you're a predator. Absolutely. It's not the 18 mark. It's the fact that you're still going through puberty. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's basically impossible for me to leave. He physically and verbally abuses me, make, got me to quit my job, cut off all my friends, and move away from my family when I wasn't ready. He also got me arrested and in jail. And the only thing making me want to stay with him now is because he's paying for my lawyer and I don't have the money to get a lawyer myself. He also got me pregnant when I was only 16 and told me to get an abortion. But after I got it, he never stopped talking about how I'm a murderer. I, wait, hold on. I think I'm just rambling at this point, but I also really need some advice. I feel so alone. He's also Muslim and converted me to being Muslim too, but he constantly tells me how I should dress and act as a Muslim woman while he has done almost everything that is forbidden in the religion that you could possibly imagine. To control you. Yeah. Last thing, he gave me an STD but flipped it on me even though I haven't fucked anyone else ever. Girl. 
leave him like okay since you're not in contact with your family he's probably made you cut ties with them and it probably ended badly you just need to reach out to them like you are 18 years old like reach out to them and tell them what you just told me like you just said that you haven't ever been honest with anybody I mean you don't have to share the more vulnerable vulnerable no I would like they probably they probably don't understand one thing is enough to be concerned. Yeah, you could just say he's abusing me. Yeah. Like, you don't even need to go into details unless you're, like, comfortable. But you need to reach out to your family and, like, have them, um, like, help you. Like, get yeah. you out of that situation. You're only 18 years old. Like you're Unless you have, a like, child. a family who doesn't give a shit, then. Well, he said, she said that he made her stop talking to his fa- her family and her friends. Yeah. And then move away from her family even I when she like didn't want to. I feel like you get, like, the same story, like, kind of A lot. Time. I know. Yeah. It's really sad. But this is definitely the youngest, 18. Like, this yeah. is so fucking sad. Yeah, girl, you have a whole life. He ahead lied of you. to you about his age and his name. He's a predator. That's what they do so that they can get these young girls. Like, it's weird. It's weird as fuck. Like, would, do you want to have him be the father of your children? Like, that's so weird. No, fuck no. Yeah. He's verbally and physically abusing you, he's not letting you speak to your family. He gave you an STD. Which means he's cheating on you? Yes. Call your family up right now. And, like, they'll be understanding. Like, I'm sure that they've had They people. probably want to help. If he made her cut them mm-hmm. off, they probably have been waiting for this. They're probably just this. waiting. Yeah, they're yeah. just waiting for you to reach out and, like, open up to them and be like, you don't even need to say you fucked up because you didn't. You were manipulated. Like, you can just say, guys, I need your help. Yeah. Like, I'm in a bad situation. Like, I'm being abused physically and me- mentally. I really need your support. That's literally all you have to say. You need to get away from him. Yep. And don't tell him that you're yeah, going to contact tell them. Him. Like, literally let your parents or your sister or your aunt, whoever you're closest with, pull up to the fucking house. And that's when you tell him, I'm leaving. Let your family help you pack up or do it while he's at work. Like do it while he's somewhere, whatever the fuck he does. He's going out. He goes to work. He'll come home and you're gone. Like you don't have any ties to him. You're not married. You don't have any kids with him. And I think people are like the reason because it sounds easy, right? But it's not. I think people are just so so easy for her. It's easy for her. Realist, like realistically, it is. It is not easy for her because emotionally it's going to be fucking hard. But I say it's not I say it's not easy for people to have kids cuz it's not like right. having to get your kids out and a home but she right. is 18 Didn't they have no me. marriage they have no kids pack your shit and get the fuck out of there like right yeah. now before you end up in a situation that yes. makes it even fucking harder to get out Yeah so. it's time to go like call them up tell them what I just told you to tell them and I'm sure your family, because you said that you had your family before and he made you stop talking to them. And you know why he made you stop talking to them? Because he was, um... It's a tactic to control you. What is that word? What is that word? Intimidated. He was intimidated by your family because he knows that if they're around, he won't have that control over you. Mm -hmm. And that's why he made you move. Because I'm assuming your family would stand up or say something or like, and he would be like, Oh hell no. Like your family has no saying what I'm doing or what we're doing. So that's why he moved you away from them. Fuck him. And I'm sure he's probably called them toxic. And yeah, he's probably like, Oh, or maybe your family has made a mistake or something. And he's like, Oh, they don't love you. Like they did this to you. And what? He doesn't love you either. Like, Like, yeah, he's not, he's picking at your trauma or like what, what has happened to you? It's time to go. Like I said, Absolutely. like when he's out of work, like when he's That's at work. That's the only advice you can give. Yeah, there are, there really. is no other advice. Like with people with kids, I'm like, stack up your money. Like, do no. My only advice is leave. Like right now. And I'm sorry you're going through that because you're yeah. so fucking young. I know, that sucks. Like, oh my God. But you do. You have a whole life ahead of you. So, like, I know this probably has made you feel like you're mature. Or that's probably what he's told you. Because that's what pred- fucking predators do. Like, you're so mature for your age. And you probably do feel really mature for your age. Because at 18, I felt mature for my age. But I also had a baby. Um, So, he's probably telling you, you're more, you're more mature for your age. Or at the time before he started beating you down, like, mentally. Um, And, like, oh, I love you because you, you act older. Like, you're thinking, oh, I moved with this man at 18. Like... I started my life with him. Like, I'm so mature, but you have so much fucking life ahead of you. It's crazy. I know. 
like insane I think back when I was 18 even me thinking like I'm so mature and like I'm so grown like I'm sure in a few years I'm gonna look back at me at 26 and (laughs) I'm gonna be like bitch no (laughs) you are still like I clueless I sometimes I feel like but I'm like clueless. the growth you go through like yeah from, from 18 like to like 18, 25 oh or whatever God. even to my age so right now is crazy. insane like you don't even I don't even recognize myself yeah me either that's what that I'm age. saying at 18 like I was in a bad relationship like and I look back at that relationship and I'm like what the fuck yeah what the fuck? I would never even bat my eyes at a relationship like that. It's just because point, lessons like, learned, you grow. Mm-hmm. So. And this is going to be a giant ass your lesson. Your giant ass lesson. This is going to be your lesson of life. Like going forward, the men that you decide to have in your life are going to be, be the so fucking much, opposite yeah, him. so much better. I hope that's what happens. I mean, I, yeah. that's usually what happens to like shit like this. But sometimes they continue to be attracted to like but you you, yeah like let's not do that like let's i'm telling you right now like let's not do that but yeah it's time to go absolutely that's the only advice for i have for this i don't even want to give you like other options just call your fucking family tell them i'm being abused physically mentally he manipulated me to stop talking to you guys if you feel like you want to apologize if you said hurtful things to somebody then apologize but I'm sure they'll have your back. Like, I'm sure they're waiting for this fucking call. Like, you're only 18. It's not like you're 35, a grown-ass woman. Like, you know? Absolutely. Like, if my daughter said some fucked up shit to me and she left with a boy, I would always forgive her. Yeah. Like... They're kids. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care what on. you said. Like, come back. Like, we can work through this. Absolutely. <sighs> Love you. In <laughs> case no one has told you that recently. <laughs> Okay, we're ending this. <laughs> for real, girl. I'm I'm really sad for you right now. Um, but yeah. Thanks guys for watching this episode or listening to this episode of Personality Podcast. Leave us down some ideas of what you guys want to talk about. I do have a few things. Um and I might even do like a podcast by myself. I don't know. Like just give us some ideas what you guys want to talk about. Um and I'll look over them. But yeah, thanks, Chris, for coming back on. Yeah. We'll have her on more option because, you know, we just vibe in here. We just be chilling. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for watching.